Well, Media 24 investigative journalist Peter Louis Meiberg joins us now via Skype. He was the person, if uh, memory serves, who broke the story originally. Peter Louis, good afternoon to you and welcome. So when you read of this court decision today, what is your response and what does it mean? Yeah, Jeremy, I think certainly, you know, there's there's some sense of vindication. You know, I think Prasa Boche, Popo Molefi also used that word in, um, you know, sort of calls that's come from a very, um, you know, it's got a very a long run up in terms of the corrupt nature of this deal. So I think, you know, it, it just cements and sort of, you know, uh, provides final confirmation to calls that have been, you know, or calls that have pointed towards a very corrupt deal from the onset. So I suppose it just cements the... Yeah, the corrupt nature of this contract. What do we know about this organization, Swifambo Rail Leasing, that was given this tender in 2013? Uh, it was little known at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, Jeremy, it's, a, it's a basically um, what appeared to be a nothing more than a shelf company with absolutely no footing in the local rail industry, which is um, why uh, that was the very reason why the company had to go and subcontract the Spanish manufact man manufacturer uh, Vosla España to actually supply the locomotive. So what you had was a situation where Swifombo was in essence, you know, only the, the supplier on paper, but the actual manufacturer of the manufacturer of the locomotives was um, the, the, the European manufacturer. So that was a very um, sort of solid basis of today's ruling as well, was this kind of fronting relationship that um, Swifombo had to process, you know, that it wasn't an actual supplier of original equipment but merely sourced it from somebody else and then obviously you know pocketed a significant amount of the contract value remind us how much money we're talking about here so it was a contract that had a value of three and a half billion rand originally for the supply of 70 locomotives um but this later ballooned to more than five billion rand because of a, a series of decisions by the Prasa management, then led by CEO Lucky Montana, you know there were um, justifications that came from Sofamba to increase the contract value that ranged from, you know, new toilet seats to the value of 42 million rand that needed to be added to the contract. So um, the ballooning of this contract itself uh, was certainly one of the issues that the, the court would have considered uh, in its ruling today. When we say that these trains were too tall for the country's rail network, does this mean that they are functionally inoperable or do things need to be adapted? No, sure, it's a little bit more complex and technical in that, Jeremy. You know, what it in essence happened was, so the, the South African rail fraternity and rail industry prescribes a vehicle gauge which allows for a vehicle height of about 3.9 meters for a you know, rail vehicle such as a locomotive. These locomotives, of um, Afro 4000 locomotives, come in at about 4.1 meters. So what the engineers at a very early stage already warned Prasa about was that the fact that um, these are diesel locomotives, so the diesel exhausts are located on the roofs of the locomotives. And when they do come close to areas with a, a lower sort of um, overhead power line, these emissions could cause serious technical problems and even flashovers that could possibly lead to the electrocution of the, the individuals who drive these locomotives. So they certainly wouldn't be bumping into any bridges or any, anything of that sort, um, but they do pose uh, quite quite a number of technical issues that make them inoperable on vast tracks of the, the South African rail network. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the railway safety regulator did release pictures of burn marks on the roofs of almost all of those trains. Am I correct? That, that's one of the core issues, you know. So the, the thir 13 locomotives that have arrived in South Africa underwent quite extensive testing on some of these rail lines. And, you know, all 13 of them um, after a couple of weeks of testing bore these burn marks which indicated that they either made contact with some of the overhead wires or, or came very close to them and that certainly you know poses cause for uh, cause for concern from a safety perspective especially the people operating these locomotives given then that they obviously can't be used for the original intention are these trains actually in use at the moment they are not in use, Jeremy. They're actually uh, standing dormant, I suppose, at the, the Bromfontein Depot here in Johannesburg. So beyond the, the testing that has um, occurred uh, so when, they, when they landed in the country a couple of years ago, they have not be, been in use uh, since then. And the court uh, then deciding to set aside this contract, uh, what does that mean? That no further uh, locomotives like this can be brought into the country, but it says nothing about those that are standing idle at the moment, I assume. 
Ab- absolutely not, Jeremy. But I spoke to you know uh, people who, from a legal perspective, are familiar with this contract, and the assumption is that the court ruling does, um, you know, it, it, it does bring to bear that uh, the money that has been paid over to Sufambo, you know, is now liable to be paid back to the South African taxpayer. And that in essence would mean this opens up a very interesting dynamic where the supply in Europe, Vosla, Espana and Sufambo now have a little bit of a a battle that they would have to sort out for themselves because Sufambo um, would have to either provide the locomotives, you know, back to the European manufacturers or they would make a different plan with them and sell them to a third party in order to recuperate some of the funds that would have to be paid back to Prasa at a later, later stage. On whose watch did this happen and what happens to that, uh, that particular team? So this happened under the, the guidance of then Group CEO Lucky Montana um, and also under the, the board of Safisa Butilezi, who is now the Deputy uh, Finance Minister of our country. So the, the next thing to watch in terms of the Prasa saga would be an ongoing court case between Prasa and the Hawks, by which the, the Prasa board is now asking the Hawks or the court to compel the Hawks to properly criminally investigate all the individuals involved in the saga. Thank you very much for joining us at Media 24 investigative journalist Peter Louis Maid.